I, I wanted to ask you, we, you talked, I want to bring the dis discussion, if you don't mind, back to something that we were touching on earlier, that your initial objection when you were at Evergreen to whatever it was that was developing in the background. And now we've had four years to see whatever it is manifesting itself. And so you, what is it? What is it that's happening, do you think, in our politicized landscape? I mean, well, um, I have a guess, and it's it's right up your alley. It's something I, I'm intending to explore um, at greater length. But the basics are this, I suspect. You and I, I think, would share the opinion that um, psychological development is among the most important phenomena for understanding human beings, and it is underrated. We tend to look at the behavior of adults and study it, but we should spend more time thinking about how those adults ended up the way they did in order to, to really understand them. And I think for, uh, you know, for each generation, you have a developmental landscape. And what the governing forces are in that developmental landscape has a lot to say about both the insights and the blind spots of the people who emerge from it. And so um, I would say that for Americans of my generation, I'm a Gen X, uh, the market played too much of a role developmentally, and it has created a kind of lens through which we can't help but look. It has, you know, commodified things in a way that is quite unhealthy. For You were born when? I was born in 1969. Okay. Um, for millennials, and maybe even more so for Gen Z, I suspect that there is a pivot to something else. And many people, you know, uh, Jonathan Haidt and Greg Lukianoff have certainly talked about um, iGen, the internet generation. But what I suspect is really going on is that if you are sufficiently plugged into the internet early enough, there comes a point at which the your persona on the internet takes primacy. It is more important than your actual physical life Jesus, persona. Jesus, it's worse than that. It's worse than that. I would say, from personal experience, there is more of me on the internet than there is in me. My well, electronic avatars are far more powerful than me. Personally, you know, and right. I can watch this because I've been away for a year and a half, and yet my internet presence has steadily increased during that time. And I, I look online now and it's 700 million views, something like so that. So now, now imagine that as the developmental environment for children. Now, here's, here's the connection I want to draw. My contention is that the online landscape is postmodern, right? That if we were just to simply describe it, the rules, the physics of online life are postmodern. Because it's abstracted we, from the environment. Right. So for example- It's like living in a dictionary. If I decided tomorrow that I was a woman, right? I could change my internet presence such that I would present in a female way. I could say, hey, anybody who doesn't treat me as female is a jerk. And the point is, I have transitioned completely, right? Now, obviously, there's no such thing in the physical world. You can transition, you can take hormones or blockers, you can get surgeries, but no, um, no man has ever become a woman and reproduced in a female way, right? So the point is the physical world has all kinds of constraints that come from physics and biology, which do not translate to the online world. And for people like you and me, for whom the online world is an add-on world, we think, well, obviously real life is the important one. And then the online thing has some interface with it, which is frightening, but we understand how they relate. But if you reverse these two things, 
then what you get is a generation that its problem solving mind says, actually, of course you can transition. You can transition and then it is everybody's obligation to live by who you've told us you are and anybody who doesn't is a bad person. And what has to be true for that to be the case, right? You know, I had, then, a, I had a fantasy a long while ago that people would end up wearing glasses, like the Google glasses, that would be illegal to take off. And that you'd be mandated to see what people wanted you to see. It, it was their right to be presented to you in the manner that they chose to present themselves. You know, and I'm not saying that's a particularly brilliant vision, but it's very much in keeping with what you're describing. So, yep, I think it's I think it's close. But if you imagine then that a, an online world in which effectively we can all be equal tomorrow as long as we say that that's the objective and we can all present as we want and others can be forced to adhere to it or be thrown off of whatever discussion, then all of this begins to make a great deal of sense. And so I'm wondering if we are not in effect in a kind of civil war between those for whom the real world has primacy and those for whom the online world has primacy. And if that's not the fundamental nature of the battle. Well, I think it, it could be the, the fundamental nature of a part of the battle. I mean, part obviously part of what's going on is whatever this unbelievably rapid rate of technological transformation is doing to us. I mean, my, my daughter and, and some people of approximately her age, so late 20s, are helping me with manage social media, let's say. Um, she's noticed that people five years younger than her have advantages in understanding the newly developed forms of social media that she's already outside of. And so that process of being hooked into the web and that being the determining factor for your worldview is probably accelerating. I mean, it's going to accelerate. Obviously, it's going to accelerate because the web is becoming more and more dominant and machines are becoming more and more intelligent. So they abstract themselves away from the world. And then the question is, well, what's the consequence of that abstraction? But it, it's funny that it's postmodern. That doesn't... There's more going on with whatever it is that's happening. Than, than technological transformation. But you think that's the fundamental driving factor? Well, I think there are a lot of ways you can look at it. Obviously, I don't think this is a real battle. Obviously, the internet runs on hardware in the real world. And everybody, you know, when the power goes out, we are all reduced to our biological selves. So I don't think there is actually anything to fight over. One of these worlds has primacy and the other is an add-on, and this is not debatable. But my point is really about the mental confusion that arises from, for most mm -hmm. people, I mean, if you think about the lives that most people are living, right? Most people at best are working a job in which they trade their labor for money that they get to spend on goods or relatively generic uh, adventures. 